So this is, a, this is the first video for section 9.4, ellipses and hyperbolas. I have eight videos for this section, four for ellipses and four for hyperbolas, all fairly short, I believe. And um, it probably should have been split into two sections, but they left it in one section, um, but that's okay. Uh, it just means there's only one homework assignment on it. So for ellipses, that's what an ellipse looks like. Uh, we'll be doing two different orientations, kind of like with the parabolas, right? There's a horizontal orientation and there's a vertical orientation. So by, by that, I mean on the first one, the, uh, the, it's uh, been stretched in the horizontal direction. And in the second one, it's kind of stretched in the vertical direction. Right, elongated. Okay, uh, in this book, they're pretty much just dealing with ellipses and hyperbolas with a center at the origin. It's just a basic introduction to these. And then if you take a pre-calculus course, which repeats a lot of the same material, um, they'll do more general ones. It's not that difficult. You just do the same kind of shifting that you do to, that the transformations that we did in, um, especially the translations that we did in the first section of this chapter. But there's other things to worry about, and so they just want you to focus on the other things, which I think is a reasonable decision to make. So we're just doing, uh, you'll see in the text, they'll talk about ellipses with different centers, and I might talk about that some in here, but the actual problems all have the, the center at the origin for the ellipses, not for the circles that we did before. Circles are a special kind of ellipse, but they're simpler than these, these ellipses. Okay, so let's do the definition first. If you have any arbitrary point on, the, uh, on an ellipse, x, y, um, and you have two foci, uh, foci, F-O-C-I is plural for focus. Uh, the parabola had one focus and one directrix, which is a line. Ellipses have two foci, and you will see hyperbolas also have two foci. And the definition is that it's going to be the set, the ellipse is going to be the set of all points, um, where the distance D1, that is the distance from the one focus to the point, plus the distance from the other focus to the point is some constant. And if you change the constant, you get a different ellipse, right? So D1 plus D2 is a constant, right? And you see, I marked those in there for the vertical one is the same, of course. That's actually the def the analytic definition. Now the geometric definition would be what you saw if you watched that video, which I hope you did, uh, before the, I think it was right before the parabola section on conic sections where they have the cone. So there's a, de there's a ge purely geometric definition of ellipses, which is uh, when the um, plane intersecting a cone the central angle is the angle of the plane to the central axis is greater than the angle uh, than the, I forgot what they called it there in that particular video. Uh, we call them different things sometimes, the central angle. Well, maybe that doesn't mean too much to you, but you can define it in terms of a plane intersecting a cone, <laughs> okay? But this is an analytic. Analytic means using formulas, okay? Which is more recent. It goes back to Descartes, who is a French philosopher, and actually put this whole Cartesian uh, coordinate system, which is the coordinate system we use, named after him. He put that as an appendix to a book on philosophy. Anyway, we have these points that I marked A, B, a and B. A is actually on the top one, 
uh, a is the distance from the center to the um, to the ellipse uh, along the horizontal direction. Actually, that's the same for both. In the x direction is the distance from the center to a point on the ellipse, right? So that's a is positive, so negative a is just on the other side. Uh, B is the distance from the center to the ellipse along the vertical, in the vertical direction, or the y direction. So that's B. Um, okay. The line segment from my, on the, on the top one, the line segment from minus A0 to A0 is called the major axis. That's, the, that's a, yeah, that's a longer segment than if you went from B minus to B. So the line segment from uh, zero negative B to zero B is the minor axis. So uh, the minor axis on this top one is brown. That's the brown letters and the brown, this little brown line, if you can see that. And the major axis I colored purple and the letters associated with the endpoints I colored purple as well. Okay, now on the, um, I thought I was gonna do the second, oh yes. On the second one, the line segment from zero to minus B, from zero minus B to zero B is the, is the major axis. So you can see what, what's going on here. The major axis is the longer one, right? And so I just decided to color the major axis purple. So sometimes the Bs are purple and sometimes the As are purple. Depends on which orientation the ellipse has, right? So the, the line segment from A to negative A0 to A0 on the bottom one is called the minor axis. So that's pretty clear, right? It's, it's actually a line segment, not a full line. Uh, the endpoints are on the ellipse and it's either horizontal or vertical. The minor one is the smaller one. Now a circle is a special kind of ellipse. Um, a circle doesn't have a major or minor axis. It has a radius <laughs> or actually it has a diameter would be the equivalent diameter um, or the analogous thing. Um, and that's the same in any direction, right? So that's why there's not a minor or major because it's the same length in any, no matter which direction you orient it in. So the vertices of an ellipse are the endpoints of the major axis. You might think it would be the all four endpoints, but it's not. It's just the endpoints of the major axis. Okay, so those are the vertices. I colored the vertices purple. I like to use purple for vertices. I did that with the parabolas too. So that's why the major axis I colored purple because its endpoints are the vertices. Okay, so there's two vertices per ellipse. Okay, and then I just have a note here at the bottom that a circle doesn't have any vertices because it doesn't have a major axis. It has a diameter which can be oriented in any, at any angle, right? So you could either have all of the points of the circle be, a vertex, be vertices or have no vertices, and it's just easier to say there's none.